In this video, we will be showing you the proper repair instructions for the 2 inch and 3 inch dry lock dry disconnect. Remove coupler from service and clean before attempting to disassemble the unit. Do not leave pipe or fittings attached to coupler because it will be necessary to reach in the threaded unit of the coupler to disassemble. It is suggested that the coupler be secured in a vise or similar fixture to facilitate working on the unit. Flats on the side of the coupler are provided for this purpose. First, remove the clamp by unscrewing the two bolts on the side using a 5 8 wrench. Next, remove the handle by loosening socket screw with an Allen wrench. Using a hammer and punch, drive the roll pin out of the handle. Be sure to keep the roll pin for reinstallation. Gently pry handle off by using a flathead screwdriver or gently tapping up on the handle. The handle extension can be lifted off once the handle is removed. Loosen jam nut and remove screw and jam nut from coupler body using the one and a quarter inch socket wrench first until jam nut is loose. Then use the inch socket wrench to loosen packing nut. Remove both the rest of the way. Once this is done, it is possible to lift off the ramp, washer, Teflon washer, the bearing, the washer, and the safety release button. It is now possible to pull shaft out of the body. Reinstall the handle back onto the shaft. Snug socket screw to shaft, rotate handle counterclockwise to open position. This will move the poppet out of the coupler body and unbinds the poppet subassembly linkage. Lightly tap on underside of handle with hammer to remove shaft, bearing, two washers, and packing all at the same time. Once the shaft is removed, the poppet subassembly can be pulled out the front end of the coupler body. Remove the bearings and plug from coupler body. Do not discard the plug. It will be reinstalled at a later time. Next, remove the handle, packing, washers, and bearing from the shaft. You're now able to replace all the seals, bearings, and washers that need to be replaced. With the poppet linkage subassembly removed from the unit, take out the cotter pin on the poppet guide. Once it is removed, you can hammer the other side of the clevis pin and pull it out. Remove the retaining ring from the poppet and the guide leg. Remove the old o-ring. It should be easy to slide off the poppet. Do not use any sharp tools. Clean o-ring sealing surfaces of poppet and poppet guide and check for scratches. Replace the poppet if scratches are found. Now install the new o-ring. Pass the o-ring over the back of the poppet linkage subassembly to the back side of the poppet. Install the retaining ring into the groove in the poppet behind the poppet guide. Make sure the retaining ring slides into place with the flat side facing up. Reassemble the poppet guide onto its diameter in the coupler poppet, making sure the bearing is still in the poppet link. Using pliers, bend the cotter pin in place. Next, remove the face seal o-ring using a soft pick or a small screwdriver. Make sure not to scratch any surfaces. With the coupler body standing upright on the threaded end, place the dummy adapter on the coupler face. The dummy adapter has the lead in that allows the o-ring poppet to slide onto the body without damaging anything. Take the poppet link and place it in the coupler body. The words top should be visible and lined up with the top of the coupler, facing the opening where the stem goes. Next, lay the coupler body down in a horizontal position and locate the shaft link by looking into the shaft hole in the top of the body. Install the shaft into the body and through the shaft link. Reinstall the handle onto the shaft and turn clockwise to pull the poppet back into the coupler. The dummy adapter can now be removed. At this point, the poppet face should be parallel to the coupler body face. Remove the shaft from the coupler. Make sure the poppet does not come out of the coupler body. With the shaft removed, reinstall the plug with the flat side up. 
insert the bearing into the coupler body boss on top of the plug. Slide the bearing over the top of the shaft. To reinstall the shaft, look into the top of the coupler body and fold the shaft link. Try to get the hex in the shaft link aligned to the hole in the coupler. The shaft link of the coupler should be lying on top of the bearing previously inserted. Turn the shaft link clockwise as far as it can go. Make sure it is on top of the bearing you've just placed. The flat end of the shaft should be facing the threaded end of the coupler when reinstalling. With the coupler body securely held, assemble the washer and packing over the top of the shaft. Packing assembly must be installed with the V-notches of the packing pointing upwards, followed by an additional washer. Install the safety release button and the spring. Assemble the big washer and the new Teflon washer over the boss on the body. Make sure the safety release button is underneath. Assemble the new bearing into the ramp ID. Then slide the ramp and bearing together onto the boss on the body. The hole in the ramp must be facing the front of the coupler. Push the ramp down until it locks together with the latch. Install the new washer on top of the ramp. Thread the jam nut all the way to the top of the screw. Thread this combination into the body over the shaft. Tighten until you feel it bottom out. It will push the packing and washers down. Slightly loosen and retighten. Repeat this process several times. Finally, tighten lock nut until it is a snug fit. Holding the screw in a final position, thread jam nut down until it contacts the washer and tighten to approximately 25 foot pounds of torque. Place the handle extension over the shaft end and down onto the ramp. Place the handle over the shaft and nest it down between the raised parts of the handle extension. It may be necessary to lightly tap the handle down with the hammer. Replace roll pin and tighten socket screw. To replace the face seal o-ring, clean the groove and check for scratches. Grease the new o-ring and align it with the groove. Push one area of the o-ring into the groove. Work the rest of the o-ring until it is installed all the way. If it is necessary to replace the safety adjusting screw, remove the jam nut on the clamp. Unthread the safety adjusting screw and install the new adjusting screw. Reassemble the jam nut, place the clamp back onto the coupler body, screwing in two 5 8 bolts on each side using a 5 8 wrench to tighten the bolts. To install the clamp and the adapter correctly, loosen the safety adjusting screw and the jam nut. Place the coupler dummy adapter into the fixed jaw of the coupler and turn the handle to the first safety release button. Use a flathead screwdriver to tighten the safety adjusting screw until it makes contact with the ramp. Then. Continue to tighten one complete turn. Push the safety release button and turn the handle to the full open position. Next, holding the safety release button, turn the handle back and forth two or three times to properly seat the adjusting screw. Turn the handle and lock in the open position. Loosen the safety adjusting screw, backing it off the ramp. Retighten the safety adjusting screw until it makes contact with the ramp. Tighten the safety screw one half to three quarters of a turn. Tighten the jam nut down against the clamp to lock the screw in place. It is recommended that the dry lock be pressure tested utilizing the air underwater method.